Hi folks, these are games that are cheap now. If all you're looking for is my selection for the week, you can scroll down to the video description below and find a complete list of the games selected and the respective storefront link where to get them, either for cheap or for nothing at all. If, however, you're interested in hearing my thoughts on them, why they were selected, maybe why you would be interested in playing them, here we go. This week, our first pit stop on the penny pinching parable is Epic Game Stores with Redoubt 2. A not so good, or rather, good but not as good version of what Wipeout games are. Spaceship racing with weapons to destroy your competitors. Mario Kart, but in a dystopian cyberpunk future with a pumping electro techno soundtrack and neon courses. There is no such feeling as destroying your enemies with a heat-seeking missile and slit-shotting past them into the lead just before the finish line. And you can have it for free on Epic. Often on sale these past few weeks, which is appropriate given the movie uh, coming out, well, that has come out. By the way, go see it. It's spectacular. On Indie Gala, not a very well-known platform, and the game key is to be activated on Steam. Still, the Mad Max game for under 3 euro, very much worth the price of admission. No popcorn included. Moving on to Steam, Steam proper, we have Blasphemous. Well, Monty Python said, Nobody expects the Spanish Inquisition. And in Blasphemous, it's the Spanish Inquisition that is not expecting this guy. Yikes. Beautiful art, and if you're kind of into, not really gothic, more baroque, religious, repentance, bloody style, that really don't see much anywhere else, to be frank. You know, apart from the uh, whole bleeding Christ on crosses uh, church thing. Blasphemous is where this is at. Blasphemous 2 is a thing, but I'm not sure it's on sale right now. Either way, Blasphemous is where you want to start. We then have Little Nightmares 2. We mentioned Little Nightmares not so long ago. I, again, not, not sure if Little Nightmares 2 was on sale then. It is certainly now. So, you had nightmares a few weeks ago, prepared for a few more daymares, not so little. Little nightmares too. Another nightmarish game, Scorn. And what a nightmare of a game it is. Not because it's bad, not because it's particularly difficult, though there are some really unexpected difficulty spikes along the way, at least twice, but because of its horrifically effective and gorgeous body horror art style. If you enjoyed movies like Videodrone and Existence, Existence, my, that fishbone gun, yeah, you're gonna have similar weapons to that in Scorn. The puzzle game, some shooting sections, kind of an HR Giger-like style in most areas, though they do tend to slide off a bit into more mechanical, more so than biomechanical, if that makes sense. But plenty of gore, plenty of things sticking into meat all over the place. Yuck. And yeah. Another game in which you might find yourself sticking metal into meat at some point, but because it's medieval and it's a fairly realistic game, so, you know, you might have to stick someone with a, a knife or a sword or a pike or an arrow. Because in Kingdom Come Deliverance, everything that a village bumpkin would have to learn and do in medieval, well, late Middle Ages, Renaissance, Central Europe, you will have to do as the game protagonist, including learning how to read 
you want to find out more of the stuff written down in these uh, book things here, yeah, you're illiterate. Learn how to read. Quite the realistic experience. Well, realistic in some regards. Beautifully worked menus. That goes against the current of modern day really bland looking interfaces very often. Not so in this game. In many ways it really does go against the grain of what the video game marketplace tends to look like uh, these days. And that is a welcome change of pace. If you have the patience for it. And if you are a patient person, what better way to put that to work in Dawn of Man? A city builder game in which you are essentially going to have to build the foundations of humanity itself in its, uh, well, I would say not really Neolithic, but the very inception of civilization, of sedentarization, of farming, people settling down, no longer being hunter-gatherer groups, and building communities. That's what you're going to do in this game. Trying to survive, at least. Survival is also an issue in Cuphead, but for different reasons, because it's a fairly difficult platform shooter with an extraordinarily original art style. The concept of the game is simple enough, but marry that with old-timey cartoon animation, hand-drawn, by the way, and you get a magnificent work of art. There's really no way to put it other than that. And at 14 euro. Not really super cheap because it's been out for a long while, but it's well worth that. Kingdom of the Dead, where there's going to be even more deaths than when playing Cuphead, because in this Return of the Oberdeen inspired art style, so very high contrast to black and white, Boomer Shooter, if you were to describe it that way, and uh, a Quake, Doom, Revival of uh, style games that has been going on for a few years now. This one really stands out, well, for the art style, but also because of the horror that penchant that it uh, really leans on this well suited to the black and white uh, art style. Also reminiscent of uh, old timey um, visual novels and comic books before it became the standard to have everything colored in. Though some visual novels are still drawn without color and yeah. Maybe more people should do that, because it's beautiful. On the humblest of platforms, Humble Bundle, if you want to know what the month's subscription uh, games are, we already mentioned that uh, in previous weeks, go take a look uh, at those. These are games that are on sale specifically. First up, Ash of Gods, and what to say, uh, if you have played the Banner Saga, the Banner Saga 2, and the Banner Saga 3, and you were wondering, oh, is there a Banner Saga 4? No, but there's Ash of Gods. So, go play this. Not as good, but pretty damn close. Prey. A game that has been again out for a while now, but has lost none of its luster. Very interesting story. No spoilers. Fairly competent shooter and original in the weapons and enemy types. Certainly not too long. It doesn't overstay its welcome. So if you're into a few gaming sessions of action, a bit of thinking and frankly interesting and original storyline, great. For all of those that are not aware or potentially not interested, but who knows, you might become interested in the RPG Maker scene. RPG Maker being a software that allows people to make video games kind of in an old JRPG style. Though the engine is a bit more versatile than most people give it props for. Uh, but again, indie games for the most part, quite a few single dev games, it is a very interesting scene. 
and there's quite a few golden nuggets in there to pick from the pack. Vagrant Hearts is maybe not the most famous, certainly among the most well-known RPG Maker games, and it is a JRPG. It's one of the most, let's say, vanilla, it's what you would expect an RPG Maker game to be, and it's pretty good at that. It might get your foot into the door of, you know, the whole scene and down the rabbit hole into how many games your hearts desire. Uh, I don't know exactly how many that would be, because there's thousands, if not tens of thousands of RPG Maker games, not all worth a look, but sift through the pile and you'll find a few that will be of interest. On to my video game store platform of choice, GOG.com. All hail, KD Project Red and the revival of old games, keeping them playable and patching them and whatnot. Stories untold. A game that I actually played through on the channel, if you want to know what it's all about before jumping in, but really, two euro, not much risk there text adventure game, but with neat 3D animations and graphics and uh, soundscapes and effects that really sell the ambiance. And you'll soon be shitting your pants, let <laughs> me tell you. Second up is Unmetal. Very, very funny. And not just because it's uh, a spoof on Hideo Kojima writing, which is hilariously bad in its own right. The focal point of the spoofness of this rendition and a gameplay style more akin to the original Metal Gear as opposed to the 3D, more modern Metal Gear Solid games. The original Metal Gear was a top-down view like this. And, well, even if you like Hideo Kojima's writing ironically, I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy Unmetal. Third up is Control. Now, I have a keen interest in architecture, so the brutalist architecture in the game certainly is quite a sight to behold very often. I am also a fan of conspiracies within conspiracies within conspiracies, within mysteries, within unknown aspects of history. As long as you stay reasonable in your interpretations, of course. Not so the case in Control, necessarily, because you don't really know much about anything, and everything is very vague and strange and mysterious, but not in such a way that you can really put your finger on what exactly is wrong. Though something is clearly, definitively, very wrong. And what is Control? Who or what is in Control, if at all? Well, you might just want to find out in a beautiful third-person shooter, also horrific, but interesting. And those were the games that I found worth a mention, on sale or available for free this week. Now let's all go back to watching European Championship football, shall we? Till next time. <laughs>